Welcome, Warriors, back with another episode of Bigger Warriors 2. And uh, welcome to the 1% Club, guys. 1%. Let me move my camera a little bit. Very good. All right. So, once again, thank you for all the comments. Thank you for all the um, likes and different types of subscriptions you guys are doing. That's wonderful. I appreciate it all. I uh, always get comments, ideas from the things you guys are telling me, and so I appreciate those, and I'm glad uh, for some of you guys it's working, and it's helping you guys become a better person, and that's the key thing. So I um, had an interesting, couple interesting types of discussions in class today, and so one of them I want to kind of do a video on, because it was really a good idea. And this is the one, and before I do that, go ahead and subscribe and like and comment again, just to kind of give me ideas of where uh, you guys are thinking about. Uh, to a lot of these type of ideas and things that we talk about. So today's topic is going to be to gravitate towards successful people and avoid people that are um, not succeeding or weak, however you want to call it, right? And so the question then, guys, is that you want to be a strong warrior. That's a key thing. You want to be a strong warrior. You want to be somebody that is going to be um, succeeding. And so what you have to do is kind of find those behaviors that allow you to succeed, right? It's almost like any kind of learning type of process. We learn by habit. So we learn by habit of repetition over a period of time. So in actuality, you can learn almost every behavior through repetition. You can almost even talk yourself into ideas through repetition over a period of time. That's why I say that, you know, over time, because I had a lower self-esteem and I didn't understand about um, retention or anything like that at this point, uh, you would go ahead and say, okay, uh, you know, I'm going to try to change my mental outlook on things. And so I would get up in the morning and say, you know, I like myself, I like myself, because I had very low self-esteem. And that tended to work. But now, with the whole idea of you know being on the journey, now I understand why all this works a lot better and a lot more strong or physical types of things that you have. I was always fighting myself all those years because I was you know having relapses and energy problems and things like that. And so any kind of gains I would get with the types of things we're talking about now, I would go ahead and lose those and I'd be back to square one. And that's why I had a lot of frustration, a lot of different things happening to me because I didn't realize that I needed to have this uh, sixth idea when it comes to the fountain of youth, and that's retaining and celibacy and brahmacharya and all the other things we're talking about. But you can go ahead and have some success in creating an attitude in your mind of winning. And a lot of times the issue between people who succeed and don't succeed is really their background and how they were, uh, how their attitudes towards winning and losing are formed. Believe it or not, guys, there are some people who don't like to lose. We know that, right? But there's also people that don't like to win. Now, that sounds crazy, and you're saying, well, Vigor Warrior, what are you talking about? Well, what I mean by that is there's some people uncomfortable with success. And when everything goes in those, those type of situations, they struggle and they will uh, subconsciously I'm not saying this is actually on purpose but subconsciously will do poorly to get back in their comfort level so if you're going to ask if you go up to somebody a beautiful person and ask them out you're probably going to end up messing up subconsciously because you really don't think that you are good enough for that person or you're strong enough to succeed in a goal those type of things happen a lot because you have a preconceived notion of yourself. And that's how you think about things. And so as you form ideas, you're really kind of conditioned by the events that have happened to you up to now. It doesn't mean you can't change it. It just means that you should recognize that all the things that have happened to you up to this point in time happen because you're learning things and people are telling you things that you take and believe. Now, you can change those things, and as time goes on, that's what happened to me. I changed my viewpoint of myself. But the whole key is realizing that you have that issue and that you're not always the, the main culprit in this, in this low self-confidence type of thing. And obviously, 
you know, trying to actually go ahead and go on your journey gives you a great deal of confidence by itself. And that whole thing then allows you to become stronger and now you're more willing to take chances and risks and do those type of things you need to do to kind of become the best person and best version you can be. So, but the idea that you want to surround yourself with successful people, that's why we're the 1% Club, right? Because what we do is we focus on the 1% of the people in the world who are doing those type of things that create all kinds of benefits for ourselves. A lot of people don't know this, or they just don't want to, uh, you know, they want to, to even try this because they have been brainwashed, in my opinion, that you need to go ahead and release all the time. And just like anything else, if, if you listen to people long enough, you start believing them, you internalize it, well, then it becomes truth for you. So if you believe you have to do that all the time, then you're going to do that. And that's what happened to me. I kind of went back and forth thinking, well, if I stop doing this, then I'm going to get really sick and unhealthy because I was told for all these years that you need to go ahead and release and do those things. That's what really a man should be, and that's what really you know separates people who are healthy and people who are not healthy, right? So those type of things always happen to us, and we have to be really at the point of be able to discern what the truth really is. And, and a lot of times what happens is that we don't realize that we're being conditioned until all of a sudden we think, oh man, I don't have to believe that. And now that's the case. So now what you gotta do is you gotta find people who are successful. And the people are the way that you want them to be. You wanna be this way, find people who did that. If you wanna be a millionaire, go talk to people who made a million dollars, right? If you wanna be a successful athlete and you're younger and you realize that this is what you wanna be, talk to people, get the people mentor you try to figure out how they succeeded and do that. It not only counts that way, guys, because you can actually see what to do, which helps you. That's why people with money in their families, they continue making money because people can learn from that. That doesn't happen all the time because some people to abuse that, they take advantage of that and they don't succeed. But what they're doing is creating a mindset of wealth. And guys, if you don't have a, if you don't have a uh, mindset of wealth, you're gonna suffer, okay? Because what's going to happen is you're going to be conditioned to spend all the money that you have. And the same thing happens with success. If you're around people who are successful, then it's going to rub off on you. What we mean by that, you're going to create a mindset. And that's crucial to be able to look at, right? And that's key to kind of say to your success. So just like a case where people have been you know, poor and in their mindset they're poor, they get a million dollars, they don't invest it, they don't do anything, they blow it away. Because they realize that they're they're actually uncomfortable with all the money they have. They're not comfortable with being a millionaire. So they find ways to spend it, lose it, all kinds of stuff, right? Give it away until they get back to the point that they're at that they're successful. Now it's strange to sound like that, but there's people who are conditioned not to succeed. And there's people who are conditioned not to go outside their comfort level. I'll give you a good example, golfing with someone one time. The person that I was golfing against was kind of like an average golfer. And so they would kind of score average. And one time I played golf with this person and they shot an amazing 18 holes the first, the first time. So the first 18 holes were unbelievable. The person was about 10 strokes ahead of me. Excellent, I said, I can't believe this, right? Now, the second half, however, was really strange. The second half, that person started making unbelievable mistakes. And they started messing up. <clears throat> and what ended up happening is by the end of the match that I had with the person, they were back to their almost their original score, what they usually do. Now, how does that happen? How does a person get so successful in the first half of something and all of a sudden bomb out the second half because now they're getting back to their regular viewpoint of themselves. My guess after studying this for a while, and it was very strange to me, so I ended up kind of studying the idea behind it, is a psychology type of, of situation, a term, that refers to you know, getting back into your comfort zone. And that person was not comfortable shooting all those strokes ahead of what they usually do 
It wasn't really me. It was more than they're comfortable with themselves. And then the person go ahead and said, okay, I'm going to go ahead and make something to go back and change this to go back to my comfort level. So guys, success is not easy, right? Success is not easy. You look at, like I said, people who win the lottery, uh, a lot of them go broke, which is unbelievable, right? Because they're not used to having that type of success. I knew people, uh, and, and I was an administrator at a college, I knew people who actually failed their last course, even though they had straight A's. And I finally kind of started asking a couple of these people, you know, why are you suffering so much in this class? And it, it came out that they were actually afraid of graduating. They weren't ready. And they said, I'm, I, I don't want to go out and get a job. I'm not ready to do this right now. And so as a result of that, they subconsciously did things to fail the course. Now, it took them a while to figure that out, but they did. And so because of that, they realized, well, I was only defeating myself. And guys, we go back to the whole type of thing. You don't want to associate with people who are not doing things that are, are good things. I know there's a lot of research showing out there that the possibility of a person doing drugs is really highly related to the, po the person who is who their friends are doing drugs. The person who does drugs is, is really highly associated with those people around them doing drugs. The same things with lascivious behaviors we talked about in the Roman Empire and any kind of empire we talked about. Those people basically, they were around all that stuff and so eventually they said, well, there's no problem with this. And so you can get to that point where you desensitize yourself so much to the media, to pictures, to people, that all of a sudden you get to the point of saying, okay, there's nothing wrong with this. There's nothing wrong with looking at pictures, nothing wrong with losing my energy. And all of a sudden now you have a different mindset than you were in before. And this is why it's crucial. I still remember the idea that I had uh, and I worked on a project when I was a, a researcher at a college and I worked at a project in which I looked at a group of people in a, uh, a high poverty area <clears throat> and I went to take their IQs. And when I took their IQs, I realized that these young people had unbelievable IQs. They were, they were smarter than a lot of my students from an IQ standpoint. So why did they fail so much? Well, a lot of it in the, in the questioning, you figure out that they had a give up mentality. No one told them they could actually succeed, so they felt like they weren't very worthwhile. They didn't have a lot of worthy behind them. They weren't very strong mentally. They didn't think they could be very intellectual. They didn't think they could actually get out of the area they were in. And this happens a great deal. The mind is really powerful. And if you're at the point where you're able to create focus, do meditation, great, do prayer, those type of things, you can create a lot of situations with, with the Lord's help and actually get to the point where you're overcoming a lot of these things that have troubled you. This is why that a lot of athletes play tricks with themselves. Let me give an example. If a person is swimming and they're within like a tenth of a point away from succeeding, well, what they do in their mind is they play the fact that they've already succeeded. The coaches will tell them of a new time, and now then they go back and break it the next time. All right? They'll, they'll over-exaggerate where they're at so that they, they have confidence they can do it. Now, is this a manipulation of, of your mind? Yeah, I think it is. For instance, like uh, Russian weightlifters used to do this back in the 1970s and 80s. They would get up there and say, okay, I'm going to bench press 300 pounds. And this is just an example. Uh, but they knew they could do 320 pounds, right? So the coaches would say, this is 330 pounds. And they would believe that. And all of a sudden, now, the next time they got up there, they would do 330 pounds. And if it's close enough, and you're not really doing exaggerated types of things, you can actually condition your mind to succeed. And this is such an important type of thing to look at that a lot of times we forget how powerful the mind is. And the same thing with aligning yourself with people. Don't align, align yourself with those uh, misery loves company groups. 
Align yourself with people who are positive, successful people, and you will become a successful warrior yourself. All right, until next time, battle on.